Today, Ukraine has quite hard times, but Ukraine shows huge knowledge, huge desire to their innovation, creation, saving its history, monuments, and to its culture. We understand that it's the most valuable that Ukrainians have for today, and whatever happens, we're trying to save it. All mountains, and especially whole Vinitsa region, have caves. Explorers say that these caves were made in ancient times and Romans lived there, who are Romans. According to different religions, they are different people. According to the ancient Slavic and Vedic belief, they are great holy people having great divine knowledge, being able to heal other people, knowing everything about the universe. But there are Christian Romans as well, meaning that they are righteous Christian monks doing austerities outside on nature. They also were respected so much, because they constantly lived praying and being highly spiritual spiritual and holy. They lived inside these caves. Just a few years ago, this area called Oksanyev's Rocks. Oksanyev's caves obtained the status of monument of cultural heritage of local meaning, defensive rock monastery. In the 11th, 17th century, legendary Romans were living here being simultaneously both lonely monks and warriors defending Ukrainian land their territory against raids starting from Turkish invasions and Poles. Since present days, there, in our complex of defensive rock monastery, a lovely monument has been remained. It's a cave church. This cave church is an evidence that people strongly believed in and loved their native land. Nowadays, we are trying to keep that stuff which existed here in the 11th, 17th century. Perhaps it's not so simple, but the past of this place is made by public activists. The path is made with the help of various projects, grants, and today there is endless stream of people here. They are coming here to this church to feel the power, to feel the faith, to meditate, to admire the Easter's landscapes, to feel themselves as a part of great Ukrainian people, a part of the universe, to get to know much better about romance, about their knowledge, about the history of world creation. And, of course, to feel the rush of power, of inspiration, of desire to create and the rush to life. It started since the time when residents of ancient village Oksanivka have kept today the memory about romance. If to ask local residents who Romans are, they will answer that they are great people. Others will say that they are God's people. And local people say very often that they are going to rocks, because there are Romans graveyards, Romans big and miraculous stone, Romans caves and rocks there. Even there are own names of everything there. They are rock, hole, sinkhole, the top. Meaning that local people save the same memory saved by their grandparents and great-grandparents. And since ancient times, these names have been saved till today. When I was a schoolgirl, I went with my mom on Easter to Yampil, the church, to sanctify the Easter cake. We were walking there because there is no need to use the car for getting to the church. There were a lot of people there, sanctifying everything they had. After sanctifying, people were walking back from Yampil. We were coming back home, eating Easter eggs, Easter cakes, meats, whatever everybody had. After having breakfast, my mom gathered that red shell of eggs, then gave it to me to bring it to the Dniester. She said to me, bring it to the Dniester and throw it in the water, let it flow to Romans, and when it reaches them, then the Romans Easter will be. I was a schoolgirl, happily running with that shell of eggs to the Dniester, throwing it in the water, let it flow to Romans. Coming back from the church, we were eating Easter eggs, and after lunch, gathering that shell of eggs, 
with the rest of food remains on the table and putting it to the handkerchief. Then we brought it all to the Dniester, throwing there in the water. This shell of eggs was said to float in 25 days to Romans, and then the Romans Easter will be after the Easter in 25 days. There is Roman's graveyard far away, on the mountain, above where people were walking up on the Roman's Easter. They were eating there, but when people were walking down the rain, it was going as well. So people were wet while turning back. Perhaps God helped them like that, or it just should be like that. If it hadn't been for a while any rain in summer, so women took a basket filled with goodies and went to the rocks to Roman shelter to ask for the rainy weather. They treated themselves there. And the rest they didn't eat was left for Romans. Then it was raining. Or it just was a coincidence, and it was simply the rain time. But it really happened. Everybody was coming to this cave church to pray. Earlier, below, there were two huge stones, big tombstones, and saved huge stone crosses that disappeared then with time, because our defensive rock complex consists of chuck interspersed with quartz and silicon, meaning that it is very fragile. Today, our church, as we can see, is changing, ruining, and needs to be preserved. But people are coming here followed by legends and ancient historical memory. If to speak about legends, so we have a quite interesting legend about a great stone. If our Romans are simultaneously both lonely monks and warriors defending their land against Turkish raids, so the legend tells that once upon a time a huge Turkish ship sailed here. On this ship, there were a lot of different goods, wealthy stuff taken from local residents during the long traveling. And it was here, where this ship collapsed and everybody were called to run on the ship to help to keep the balance of the ship. One Turkish man was walking alongside the shore carrying that hat filled with gold that he gathered from Ukrainian farm steeds, from women's houses, or maybe even he just stole it. So he was carrying this huge hat with gold and was suddenly called, faster, faster, everybody come on ship, help. So he put the hat with gold on the ground and ran on the ship. When the ship was fixed, he turned back to his hat, filled with gold, and above the, on the rocks, there an old Romans was sitting, and he saw the Turkish man was walking, the enemy was coming to steal our Ukrainian goods and thought, we won't give our gold to sail far away. And he tore off with his mighty hand the great stone rock and directed it straight below on that hat with gold, and that gold is still under that great stone. Local people say so. We were near the Great Stone. We were grazing the cattle near the Great Stone. We came to the Great Stone, meaning that it is like a great mock. Others say that when it is the day of the Roman Easter, the gold is sparkling and it can be seen, but it can be got only by good, true and nice people, using this gold for good purpose, for development of Ukrainian state. We believe that perhaps one day such times will come. Once upon a time, a young boy was on our excursion, and he said, when I grow up, I will for sure get this gold out and give it in favor of Ukraine. A lot of people were coming here, and there is another version that this gold is not material. It's like a knowledge, a wealth, a faith, a power of Ukrainian people, and who understands it, who obtains it. Then this person will become strong and wealthy for the whole life. There were a huge amount of ideas of different directions. Well, first of all, probably, Dniester was always a border between the West and the East worlds. From another hand, it was exactly high banks, unreachable rocks, soft chalk, that gave the possibility to build caves, rock monasteries, so perhaps it was caused by it. Or maybe, even it was caused by a living here of ancient magicians, and such ancient knowledge was just saved from that time that there were always some people here praying, defending, and exactly it was a part of a defending rock monastery of the 11th 
since 17th century. And we were set with the same worlds by historians. It was them who confirmed the rocks which we have. When it was the last expedition in 2013, we found a wooden crossbar, confirmed in Krakow, on radiological analysis, to be in 1675. Meaning that it is an evidence that these caves are quite ancient. It is not so easy to get to these caves. The first variant was to go down using various ropes. And the second variant was to use special clips for hands and legs to go up to the cave. When we were going down using climbing equipment from above to the cave, so we didn't reach it with our hands. We couldn't do that neither hands nor legs. Maybe East borders always need to be protected, and they were protected by monks performing the role of warriors defending their native land as well. Once people were saying, when I was very young, and just a little bit remember, that those Romans were so tall, that they were getting each other across the Dniste. They were said to have big hands and legs, but I didn't see it, because I had never gone there. Maybe somebody was going there, was interested in it. Once there were plates there, but the tractor plowed everything, and now there is a forest. Before, there wasn't any forest there, and as it was for a very long time ago, so all of it was washed away by rains. That's why there is no any sign. Stone mazes in our country are typical for mountain area. A lot of such mazes are found in Carpathians, for example. They are found near Bukovel and in mountains. It was this maze that was reproduced, but it is still the same like it was a century ago. Stone mazes in mountains, connected with legends about Romans, who built all these cultural sculptures that we can see in mountains. They built caves, cave towns, some kind of sacred figures, mazes, stone stars, and a lot of others. This place, tract is called Lisahora, Bear Mountain. Why is Lisa? Well, because it was really bare in its time. Moreover, it has such name because it is situated above the hill, above the settlement Busha and Oroshivka, meaning that it is the highest point in this settlement. Here, during their archaeological excavations, there were found the leavings of ancient settlements. It is an age of late bronze, early Iron Age. And it is possible during the walk on the field after harvest to find artifacts relating to the age of first millennium, to the Christian Christmas. Besides, there are signs that it was this hill where the sanctuary probably was. There are places showing it, meaning that there are hills where the houses were built. They were preserved only on the hill called Lisahora, because it wasn't processed at any time. There wasn't performed any agriculture here, meaning that here the soil wasn't processed. 
because the reserve of black soil isn't so big here. And that's why it saved its fragments of archaeological monuments. The mountain is comfortable because there are good black soils near it, including the field, where the livings of settlement, material cultural livings of that age, can be found, and also there are well springs. Here, at the foot of Lisahora, there are two well springs, and perhaps people had the possibility to use them. And even now, when there is no water, so last houses of the village Doroshivka use these well springs, taking the water. The water is incredibly tasty. And there are some legends regarding the characteristics of this water, meaning that it is an amazingly interesting and beautiful place. It is overgrown now with forest, which was made artificially. In 70s of the last 20th century, the trees were being planted, and now such a big until all grows here. Truly speaking, this place regarding the researches of history, archaeology and other sacred meanings is very interesting. It is on the edge of a great territory having 300 years old oaks. In Verkhovina tract there is a great fragment of territory where 300 years old oaks grow. This territory for today has the status of state nature reserve. Olisi Hori, Bear Mountains, are ancient sanctuaries. Why were they called like that? Because the mountain was out of plants, and on the top either the temple or sanctuaries or churches were built, where people were speaking to higher powers, meaning that all Isihori, Bear Mountains, are the former sanctuaries and power places. What is it famous for? First of all, there was an ancient settlement, and upon each of them there was a culture center where priests were speaking to higher powers. Secondary, this mountain has healing wellsprings about what is even written in Polish chronicles. When Polish aristocracy was ill, they arrived at this place and drank water from these wellsprings, so their health was getting better. And Europe got to know exactly about it, that if to drink water from bushes wellsprings, so the health is getting better, and even the whole pilgrimage exists from the countries of European Union. We are now in Busha, in the center of Stone Star. This stone star has nine rays. It is nine ray star. The maze and stone star are close to each other. Around the maze we see 13 small stone pyramids. And it's made on purpose, because the number 13 in all ancient religions is the number of sky, because it includes the sun and 12 zodiacs. The number 13 in the universe is considered to have a manifestation of a male power. And number 9 is considered to have a manifestation of a female power. So that's why 9 ray star, 9 stairs pyramids and everything having the number 9 is a maternal energy of God, a woman, female energy of the universe. And that's why this star was built for working with female energy of the universe. Nine ray star is considered to clean our subconsciousness. We have a lot of different fears, a lot of different and pleasant reminders about some kind of situations in our subconsciousness. Our subconsciousness contains a lot of different stuff that doesn't allow the person to be happy, to develop. So for cleaning of subconsciousness, people walk on the rays of the star or stand in the center, and the cleaning is happening. 